Hey, hey, hey guys, what's up? My name's Sean, and I have a chance, and I'm Gaming Nerd 22. And my name's Sean, I can't, I, I don't know why I can't do the, I have my friend Jave. It's a <laughs> And the dude, with the nerdy dude. <laughs> Please be quiet. Okay, please pause it. Pause. Pause it. Okay. Okay. Sorry that I didn't make a video for a long time. I got. I just got my phone. Yeah. Why literally? He, it got dropped and then it went kaboom. Like what happens when you blow up a a command? Oh yeah. Or a, 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 a planetary fortress with siege tanks. Like the or la void race. Like the last video that that I made. One of my videos. Definitely not the last video that I made, if you didn't see it, uh, I showed you my phone. It went boom boom. Let's see if I can find it. If I can find it. It's pretty hard. It's somewhere in here, don't worry. I'll find it soon. Um. I can't find it. Like right. four batches. Get ready to have your mind turned into pulverized dust after this video. Okay, but wait, I need to find my old phone. Where is my old phone? Okay, I, I can't find my old phone, but just watch the other video and then you'll know. Yeah, it looks like a uh, Bangling decided to crash into it. And if you play StarCraft, you know what stuff looks like. Especially a marine, they turn into. T you don't even want to know. So yeah, this is probably gonna be a really long video because I want it because I want the views. Because uh, there's something called view minutes. We just learned that we are smarty smart. Okay. I learned that from purple. Chat. Tell the truth. Tell the truth of YouTube. So what YouTube is doing is it's creating um the um. Uh, so how many minutes you watch a video? It doesn't matter if it's a good video or not or anything. As long as you watch a minute, that counts as a view. The longer the video, the better. So, and also, if you make daily content, they're going to be coming to it, and it's going to be put on to replace your old videos, so you'll get even more views. doesn't matter if it, the video is broken or not. You don't repair it. Just don't. Don't. <laughs> Done. Yeah, so this is gonna be full of ads too. Ha! That's how you get money. Uh you do? Yeah, people the more that people watch the ads, the more that people get the more money that you get. And that's Take true. that in the note, take that in the note next time you're watching YouTube, or if you're a YouTuber, make sure you know that. Or else you're gonna have so much problems. You're gonna go you like what happens when a marine is inside of a medevac and the medevac gets shot down by a corruptor? You will have no money coming in your paycheck. Because that's how it works. I don't know why, but YouTube is being stupid. Yes. What? Oh, yeah. Um, if you come by my house, which is uh, 5129 South, 2675 West, Royal Utah, it, it's centrally. If you want to, it's if you want to turn on the yeah. If you want to turn on the Wi-Fi, um, turn on the Wi-Fi on my house. It's centrally Dude, zero. Dude, that breaks one, the law. That's two, breaking two. the law. I don't care. People <laughs> break that law every flipping day, and it, people have been arrested for that law. And never you can tell you. <laughs> And blah blah blah. Be careful for the pigs known as cops. Yeah. I don't exactly like them because they arrested my mother because she was protecting me and Sicily from a psycho of a old my old dad. That's a psycho. Wow. Whoop 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 a gun star. No, how you get views? How you get views? Ha put on a one hour long song. And what play on the video for one about one hour? You know those people that actually do that? Is that huh? The actual last 
You, my views, you are the best. And now this is just going to be a really long video. Dude, I just want to watch this. Oh, Game Theorist. <laughs> We're going to watch this one video right here. Now, this is too far. Guardian of the Galaxy, a female one. One that has entirely nothing to do with that movie. It's Rosalina. We're talking about Rosalina from Super Mario Galaxy. But yeah, that movie was great, right? I love the part where Star-Lord was like, I'm Star-Lord, he's all like, pew, 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 Game Dears is awesome. I so sleep. <laughs> Hashtag Game Dears fans. Grab that Mario Sasha and Sonic. Go make a mask. Make sure you pick up your mask. Right there. We're on. Uh, hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that really can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Seriously, I'm two, to which is already probably already out. Oh, so good. Sorry, sorry, I gotta stay focused. Anyway, let's talk about Rosalina. She's a galaxy hopping princess with a hairstyle stolen straight from Captain Planet's Dr. Flight. And from her humble beginnings in Super Mario Galaxy, she's starting to appear in everything. Three main series titles, four Mario cards, a party, a round at the links, and pretty soon the newest Smash. Fire Emblem characters and Ness still hasn't been confirmed for the game. Get your priorities straight, Nintendo. But outside of she owns a space station and she looks smoking hot, I like her. No, Mom! Hi. Hi. Why are you wearing a sweater? Why is your clothes everywhere? I didn't put my my stuff there. I'll put it right here. Wait, you're telling me. Move, please. Thank for you. you. From Valentine's. For um, Mother's Day. Mother's Day? Yeah. Thanks, Minion. This isn't their fault. This is the baby's fault, actually. Ugh. Hey, you want to watch the Game Theory's video? It's two parts. No, no, I'm good. Thanks. No, bye. <laughs> yeah, she, she doesn't like YouTube. But, brother, when your friends leave, will you please clean up the staircase like I asked you to two days ago? Yeah. I got a lot of chores. This is going to take long. Fifteen Fire Emblem characters and Ness still hasn't been confirmed for the game. Get your priorities straight, Nintendo. But outside of she owns a space station and she looks smoking hot in a biker outfit, what do we really know about this monotone maiden? Nothing. She's an interstellar enigma. Or is she? Who is Rosalina? Have there been clues hidden in plain sight as to what her true identity is? Today we're out to solve this maiden's mystery, and what we find throws everything you thought you knew about the Mario universe out the window. Well, except for the fact that he's a sociopath, which is still 100% legit. It seems to me the best place to start is with the bedtime story Rosalina reads throughout Super Mario Galaxy. The story recounts the tale of a sad little girl on a quest to find one loop. Oh, I think I forgot again. This missing mother. Prepare to be shocked. That story is actually about Rosalina herself. What? An earth-shattering revelation, I know. But seriously, where it gets interesting is in Chapter 4, when the story mentions Rosalina's mother. Via the book's illustrations, we get two glimpses of her. First, from the back, and then again, the bottom half of her face. Do those hair flips, that mouth shape, the gold crown, and those rounded blue earrings look familiar? Because they should. Peach is Rosalina's mother. Cue the dramatic music. Uh, not quite as dramatic as I envisioned, but okay. No, wait, I can read your mind. But the hair is longer and the dress is blue. That's what you're thinking, right? Right, be honest. Man, I'm like the geeky version of David Blaine. But I agree. These similarities are very superficial and far from 100% confirmation. That's why it's also worth mentioning the silhouette of the castle that appears in Chapter 7 of the book. When the little girl in the story looks at her me former home the from her father's old telescope, uh, notice that the rain prominent spires with the one... Sean? What? Help him log into Wi Fi. Aren't you already in? No. It's. <laughs> Well, this try to hold it like to towards the edge. Since it's in shadow, though, I suppose it could be just any old pre-spired castle with one very tall one in the center. I mean, I hear those are very popular in the Mushroom Kingdom, after all. Hashtag obvious sarcasm is obvious, but if we're going to prove something as huge as Rosalina being the daughter of the first lady of gaming, we need something more than this. We need something more definitive. We need something scientific. Jeans! Ronnie, come on, let's try it again. Jeans! 
Genetics. DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Come on, dude, you're ruining my flow. If PJ and Rosalina are truly related, they should be sharing some physical features, right? And yeah, I mean, obviously they look alike, but we're the game theorists. We could do one better. We can use genetics to show that there's a high statistical probability that the two are related. So let's start with one of Rosalina's most identifiable traits. Her earlobes. Now you didn't see that one coming. Whether That's or not weird. your earlobes hang low and wobble to and fro, or are attached to your head, is dictated by a simple dominant recessive gene relationship. You probably did this stuff in school, right? Seventh grade bio sci, anyone? But to recap, you get one set of genes or alleles from your father and one set from your mother. The combination dictates what trait you show. That's called your phenotype. Phenotype for physical. It's what people see. So for earlobes, dangling earlobes are dominant and attached to earlobes. Let's demonstrate Hi. that with a big D and a little D. So as an example, I actually let's say have father a and mother big D allele. One big D allele and one small D allele. By creating a chart called a Punnett square that shows all the possible gene combinations the child could have, where he gets one gene from yeah, each parent, you see that the child is most likely to have dead. Because three out of the four scenarios contain a big D. The big D is dominant or stronger and covers up the little D. But if you have two little D alleles, one from mom and one from dad, your lobes will be attached, making it the rare trait. Which is funny because Rosalina, believe it or not, has attached earlobes. Check it out! And that means both her parents would need to possess the small D allele. But how could we possibly figure out the genetic code of fictional Mario? Why is it Mario? Glad you asked that. I thought it was a week. Mario to have a baby, there's a 
gameplay footage of her, and you see that she's left-handed. Notice how she prefers to keep her wand in her left hand? In an interesting twist, promotional art for her shows her holding it in her right hand, but I would assume that this is actually the product of the world's right-handed bias. But that's a can of worms for an entirely different day. For now, let's focus on the genetics. Handedness is weird because it's not like the previous genetic examples. Researchers have no clear predictors that they've been able to figure out. What scientists do know is that consistently, 10% of the world's population is left-handed, and that left-handedness tends to run in families, with the mother's preference being an important factor. On average, the chances of two right-handed right -handed? parents having a left-handed child are around so, 10%. There you go. Having a right-handed mother and left-handed father keeps that percentage about the same. But having a left-handed mother and right-handed father makes the probability double. Now looking across games, particularly the sports games, Mario Super Sluggers, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, Nintendo's main man is clearly right-handed, no question there. But Peach is actually ambidextrous, good with both her right and left hands, playing baseball and tennis favoring the right, but golfing favoring the left. People born with a left-hand bias at birth are statistically more likely to show ambidextrous qualities later in life. So the likelihood of a couple like her and Mario having a left-handed child like Rosalina is actually greater than most other couples. The only thing that would increase those odds would have both parents be lefties, which increases the probability to 35%. So similar to how we approach TF2's Pyro, not only does Peach oh, yeah, match the mother's that. depiction in the storybook, but statistically speaking, Peach's what hypothetical you, daughter would have a much higher than normal chance normal. of sharing a lot of the same normal, qualities normal. as Rosalina. But there's one final piece Let's okay, revisit chapter seven of Rosalina. It's the normal camera. We've already talked about the illustrations, but let's talk about the clues buried in the actual text. Quote, it's, she twisted the no, knob no, to tell us and the blue dot grew until she I'm not going with that. I'm going with this. The normal camera. Double tap, um, go to the main screen. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. So we know that Rosalina's oh. home, that castle, I know the normal camera, but from I mean the orange start. video you thing. That's you, you record it. Uh. As Mario runs to the top of the hill that overlooks Peach's castle, meaning it's close enough to walk to, and has a beautiful view of the stars. It also happens to be lined with flowers, just like the hill described in the storybook. And not only does it have flowers, but look at the color of the flowers in the illustration. Purple, white, and yellow. Now look at the flowers on Mario's hill at the beginning of the game. Purple, white, and yellow. Now we're getting somewhere. And there's more. Here's an excerpt from when Rosalina's story takes a dark turn. Quote, she remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on bright, windy days. And the girl burst into tears. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because, because she's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars. A hush fell over the area. Like a punch to the gut, the story reveals that the girl's mother has been dead and buried the whole time. In a game like Mario, where dying in pits of lava or getting sucked into black holes is pretty much par for the course, knowing that there's a character that has died and is buried is just unsettling. It's a bit eerie. But this passage also provides us another clue as to the geography of this hill. There's a single tree on top of it. Find that tree on top of that stargazing hill that's right down the road from Peach's castle and with the yellow, purple, and white flowers, and you've got yourself a slam dunk. So, I played through the beginning of the game again looking to find that tree and didn't. Fury busted. Or was it? I remember that the end of the game features one final grand sweeping shot of the landscape around Peach's castle. And would you believe it? At the top of that hill, the hill that Mario just so happens to start the game at, the hill that matches all the qualities we've been looking for so far, what's at the top of that hill? A single tree. Ooh, did you feel that? I just got a chill down my spine. All the signs are there. Peach's hair, earrings, mouth, and crown in the illustrations. The genetics contributing to Rosalina's attached earlobes, blue eyes, blonde hair, and left-handedness. And the geography of the stargazing hill with white, yellow, and purple flowers with a single tree on top that Rosalina's mother is buried on. Wait, if Peach is Rosalina's mother, then that would mean Peach should be buried under that tree. How is that possible? 
clearly I've overlooked something. Or I'm just running out of time and have to save it for part two. I promise you, not only is there an explanation, it's one that perfectly fits with the theme of the game, ties together all the weird, cryptic loose ends present in Super Mario Galaxy, and even begins to offer us some deep philosophical undertones to the Mario franchise as a whole. In the meantime, that's just a theory. Oh. This is another one. This one is insane. This is part two? Yep. This is why I wanted everyone to see it. These... This is just So it looks awesome. like someone finally got a piece of that cake, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Game theory. The show that is finally concluding a two-part series. And if only I would do that watch underscore dogs episode. Anyway, last time we used a little bit of Mario Galaxy lore and a heap in help and genetics to conclude that Rosalina has an unusually high probability of being Peach's daughter. But there were a few sticking points to that theory. In particular, that Rosalina's mother is dead. And Peach doesn't seem to be. There are other problems too, like the relative lack of an age difference between Peach and Rosalina, but this episode will answer all those concerns and hey, more, not only solving Rosalina. the mystery of Rosalina's parentage hey. and the eternal question no. of Mario Jumpman Mario's- WHAT?! Maybe Rosalina is actually sister of- It is possible! Peach. Or Multiple Rosalina lives, but also completely Peach. overturning everything you thought you knew about Miyamoto's beloved franchise. If you thought Mario being a sociopath was earth shattering, just wait till you see the end of this one. So let's start with the elephant in the room, Peach being dead. As we concluded last episode, Rosalina's mother is buried under a tree on her favorite stargazing hill. How can that possibly happen when, uh, yep, uh, breathing, kidnapped my files are calling for help, promise of future cake. Yep, Peach seems to be at least somewhat alive in Super Mario Galaxy. But that's actually the whole premise of the game. The game's ending. Do I need a spoiler alert for a Mario game ending? Like, they're always one step above congratulations. Uh, so here, spoiler alert for practically every Mario game ever. Peach gets saved and Bowser falls into lava. I'd say that's probably about like 87% of the games. Clearly we are not playing these games for the epic conclusion, friends. But Galaxy is part of the 13th. Sporting one of the most bizarrely cryptic endings to happen since Enslaved on the Xbox. Bowser, Mario, and Peach all get sucked into a cataclysmic black hole, and everything gets destroyed. Look at the way it decimates Bowser's ship. A bunch of baby stars then sacrifice themselves, creating something similar to the Big Bang, which brings to life a whole new galaxy. Rosalina then talks to Mario about the cycle of rebirth, how stardom... Dang it! Gosh! Dang it! They're gonna screw this toaster, and the don't explode, and then I'm gonna blow it up again with a nuke, and then I'm gonna just... I wanna... Gosh, dang it, I need a tactical toaster! Make time for Snapple. Duh! Today, we're talking about it. Gosh! Dang it! Today, we're talking about... Ah, this is so hard. Someone else want an AM missile so I can shut this thing down! From dying stars eventually reforms into a new star, and the cycle continues, but with small changes each time. It's like an astronomical version of Groundhog's Day. No two go arounds are exactly the same. She then tells Mario that he'll see. Mario wakes up and is back in the Mushroom Kingdom, but things are a bit different. Dude, this is 25 minutes. Now 26. Come on. Galaxy pan out, spot Peach's burial tree on the hill, roll credits. So what happened exactly? That black hole seemed 
to destroy everything. Everyone is now on the same planet, and Rosalina's closing speech is vague at best. Well, her cryptic dialogue actually explains it all. Mario, Peach, Bowser, and all the rest have just been reborn into a new galaxy cycle. At the beginning of the game, we were playing in a galaxy that had all the characters separated out onto different planets. But in this new, remixed version of the galaxy that was just created by the Black Hole and Baby Lumas, everyone exists on the same planet. The cycle has been restarted, but with the small difference of everyone sharing a planet. You see, let me put it a different way. True loyal theorists watching this show will remember long, long ago when I covered the Zelda timeline. There, you had a parallel series of multiverses, each with a small tweak. Link survives in this timeline and dies in this one and never exists it would seem Mario's world believes in something similar. Think about it like hitting the reset button on your old NES. Is that a reference that anyone even gets at this I point? Know. Anyway, the old NES had a reset button. It doesn't go with me here. So you want to fire up a game of Super Mario Brothers on your like NES. You hit the power right? button, the screen flickers, you have to eject cards. Go the new one. Reinsert it, push it down, and you hit the power button again, and there you go, the game starts. Now imagine you hit the reset button and start up the game again, but this time the blocks are arranged in a different way. And Goombas and Koopas are showing up in weird locations. Hit the reset button again, and again a new arrangement of the same core pieces. Mario Galaxy is basically working on the philosophy of the galaxy resetting itself, remixing itself every time. Like Rosalina said, the cycle never repeats the same way. In fact, this idea explains Mario's multiple lives. How can Mario fall into a pit, die, but then have three more tries to get it right? It's new iterations of the galaxy each time. It's also an explanation for Mario and Bowser being mortal enemies 90% of the time and cart buddies the other 10%. Or the on-again, off-again appearance of the Koopa Kids. Or where Gino and Mallow went. Please let there be a galaxy iteration where they come back. It was so good. Okay, but how does this all explain Peach being dead? Easy. Rosalina is Peach's daughter from a previous cycle of the galaxy. Peach had a child, raised her, and died. Devastated, Rosalina flew away only to return and check on her home every hundred years, or every new cycle of the galaxy. It just so happens that the particular cycle featured in this game is one in which she gets roped into the action. Does this seem too metaphysical or too deep? It shouldn't, because it's the core belief of the game. Anyone who's played the game beyond the Mario missions and has gone through it with Luigi has seen the proof for themselves. With Mario, you have the Rescue Luigi missions, where your clumsy brother gets himself trapped and you need to save him. Great, nothing unusual there. But when you play the game with Luigi and get to those missions again, you expect to be saving Mario only to find that, nope, you're still saving Luigi. It's awkward. The explanation given for this is, well, I guess there's enough people in the universe for one person to look like me. Except what's really going on here is that you're meeting a version of Luigi from a different cycle of the galaxy. If nothing else, this encounter shows that Super Mario Galaxy is a title that bends metaphysical rules. Okay, if Rosalina and Luigi 2 are from previous cycles of the galaxy, how are they so young? How can Rosalina look the same age as Peach if they're mother and daughter? And how can Rosalina revisit her home planet every hundred years or more if she's a normal human with a normal human lifespan? Oh, come on. It doesn't take an Einstein to figure that one out. Well, actually it does. Or at least it did. In 1905, Albert Einstein proposed a theory, a scientific theory, called special relativity. You know E equals MC squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared? Yeah, that's a part of it. It's incredibly complicated stuff, but suffice it to say, it completely... 30 minutes. ...and answered a lot of scientists' lingering questions around time, space, and light. It also, believe it or not, answers how Rosalina and Peach can be practically the same age. One of the consequences of this theory was the concept of time dilation, or the fact that time slows with motion. The faster you move, the more difference occurs, and at speeds close to the speed of light, time practically stops. It sounds crazy, but it's been proven. Two synchronized atomic clocks were tested. One clock was kept on Earth, while another one was put into a high-speed plane and flown around for a while. When the plane returned, the clock was behind by exactly the amount Einstein's equations predicted. But when they resynchronized the clocks on Earth, they were still running at exactly the same rate. In other words, time had passed slower on the plane because of how fast it was traveling. Time had dilated or expanded. In other words, time travel is proven 
to be a real thing. Now look at Rosalina's ship. It travels between galaxies at speeds approaching the speed of light. So for her, time moves much slower relative to the time on Earth. In fact, using an online time dilation calculator, I was able to conclude that one year aboard her ship traveling slightly what? under the speed of light would act. Should be the equivalent of a hundred years of Earth time. So say Rosalina is I got, um, that's no, I'm gonna put this away. Years worth of Earth time, and that's a conservative okay. estimate. Einstein, truly you have given the world many great gifts, but none compare with your most recent contribution to society. Proof that fictional characters are related. But enough science, let's get back to the lore. Did you ever notice that Rosalina never refers to Peach by name? She always calls her Mario's special one. Probably because she feels awkward calling her mom by her real name. Or maybe that was the pet name Mario would use for her when they were together. Sure, it's not quite as compelling of evidence as relativistic physics, but hey, it's something. No, if you it still is. don't believe me, man, you really have some serious trust issues, because I have proved this thing every way to Sunday. Lore, genetics, physics, I mean, seriously, cut me some slack here. But I'm sure there are still some of you out there who are going to say, oh, you're overthinking the game. Oh, the designers didn't plan this. To disprove every last doubting Wario out there, Yoshiaki Koizumi, that's about as good as I'm going to get at pronouncing that name, the writer of Rosalina's storybook. Okay, guys, so. Dude, I'm gonna to do something. Okay, guys, I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna um, see when this is over and talk to you again and then end the video. Bye. Okay, bye. Hey, 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 it's over now. See? It's over. So, guys. I'm gonna end this video here. It's all about the views. It's all about the minutes. Okay. Bye, guys. Peace, guys. Everybody. See you later. Cicely. Yes. Say bye. Bye. -bye. Banyan. Bye bye. Peace. Bye -bye. Bro.